Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ and today I'm breaking form a bit to do just a talking head style video because there's something I need to discuss. Something it seems nobody else is talking about or they are talking about it but they're leaving out very important details. And that's the current GPU market or more specifically current GPU pricing. And I'm not talking about scalper prices or third party retail markups. I'm talking current and future MSRP pricing and exactly what's affecting it. And this all stems from the fact that I just purchased this brand new RTX 3050 at the MSRP of $240, which to me is absolutely the best deal or the best value in PC gaming in the past year or more. But despite that, and I'm not singling anyone out, Something I've just noticed from both reviewers and in general from community interaction is continuing to compare the price to performance of current new graphics cards to the price to performance of one, two or five year old cards based on cost alone. Now, of course, it's been traditional to take a card like this 3050 and compare it to the last gen predecessor, which, well, doesn't really apply here unless you're taking Nvidia's line of bull that this is the replacement for the GTS 1650. No, but my point is we've always said this new card gives you 30% more performance for 20% more money, so that's a fair value, or this new card only gives you 10% more performance at 50% more cost, so bad. Unfortunately, things have changed. Economic factors prior to 2020 stayed relatively stable from year to year. However, since then, not so much. So while people are screaming about scalpers and miners, at this point in 2022, that's not what's affecting MSRP of this RTX 3050. No, to understand that, we need to discuss tariffs, raw material shortage, global supply chain problems, all resulting in the biggest factor affecting prices, record inflation. Not glamorous, but if you listen, you might find some insight. So let's start with tariffs. Any electronic product produced in China in the past three and a half years have a 25% tariff imposed. Now, at first, with the NVIDIA 2000 series and Radeon 5000 series, manufacturers found ways to reduce and absorb this cost because supply still outweighed demand, so passing it on to consumer wasn't financially feasible. But as the supply versus demand dynamic flip-flopped, yeah, the consumer is eating a lot of that added cost. And it doesn't look like these Trump-era import taxes are going away. In February 2021, several large graphic card manufacturers wrote the Biden administration asking to lift the tariffs. That was a year ago, so I'd say the answer is no. Now, all the factors I'm discussing are also leading to the rise in the cost of everything that's needed to physically make this graphics card. The cost of aluminum to make the heat sink increased by over 60% just since last October. Copper's more expensive, polymers, everything. And when we think of semiconductor shortages, it's not just the actual GPU die, it's many of all the other little chips and SMDs used on this card. In some cases, these little chips have increased in cost by over 400%. Now, a tiny component going from 10 cents to 40 cents might not seem that big a deal, but consider manufacturers are buying these in bulk by the millions, that adds up fast. Those components are also taking a lot longer to arrive. Some components and chips have a lead time of over a year right now, which leads me to the global supply chain slowdown. Generally, it would take a product about 50 days travel time from leaving the factory in China to arriving in a retailer's warehouse in the US or Western world. Right now, on average, it's taking about 110 days. All that extra transport time means more fuel costs, more labor costs, it's not free. The cost is paid by the manufacturer shipping the item, which is passed on to us. I have four products sitting here in the office that I received from different companies to review months ago, but they're just sitting here because although launched, they haven't made it to retailers yet. And I'm not reviewing products you can actually buy. Now, the biggest factor affecting the cost of everything today is just straight up inflation. See, we never had to really factor in inflation when comparing GPU MSRPs from one generation to the next because generally the inflation rate has gone up a percent one year, down half a percent the next, 
up 2%, back down half a percent. It doesn't ever really affect pricing in the short term. Unfortunately, right now, we're seeing the highest inflation rate since the 1980s. The inflation rate in 2021 was 7% and it's still rising. The technical definition of inflation is the loss of purchasing power of currency resulting in increased prices or simply the same amount of money today doesn't buy you as much as it used to. We see this all around us. You pay a utility bill lately, need to buy a new appliance or piece of furniture, how's that grocery bill looking? Taco Tuesday for my family has gotten about 20% more expensive over the past year, but my tacos only taste about 5% better. Is that good price to culinary performance? Just a few months ago, my dishwasher broke down. I had to buy a new one, and the only model I could get with less than like a six month wait was a two year old model that cost 25% more than its launch price. I own a 2015 Ram 1500 Outdoorsman that I bought used in 2018. Today, that truck is worth more than I paid for it three and a half years and 30,000 miles later. So to sum this all up, I had a conversation with a viewer who argued that the RTX 3050 performs just slightly better than a GTX 1070, which cost $380 back in 2016. So the max you should pay for a 3050 is $380, which I actually agree with, but for different reasons. Because if you apply just the general cumulative inflation rate, of 16.2% to that 2016 card, that's $441 in 2022. Oh, and don't forget the 25% tariff. So now the argument should be $551 is the max you should pay for this? I don't think so, but the market is bearing this out to a degree as 450 to 470-ish is where the scalper sales are falling right now and where third-party retailers are marking even the $249 cards up to. Because there's MSRP and the factors I just covered do now and will continue to affect MSRP, but the major driving force behind what you'll pay for a product is what the majority of consumers like you are willing to pay for it. Supply and demand. If the majority of consumers are willing to pay $450 for this RTX 3050, that's what retailers are gonna sell it for. That's the job of any company or corporation. Make money and keep their stock prices up. Now, I can jump on the bandwagon and pound my fist and scream that these billion dollar companies are just taking advantage of the consumer while they continue to make billions of dollars. And I'll admit, when you see a product like the RX 6500 XT come out, it's hard not to jump to that conclusion because that does seem really anti-consumer to me. But on the same note, when you see Asus, Zotac, EVGA, and Gigabyte actually sell 3050s at MSRP, we didn't see a lot of the opposite type of coverage because it's not the popular thing to do right now, I guess. And that's also because outside of the Newegg shuffle, they really aren't available. But if this Phoenix 3050 that I bought for $249 is selling for 400 bucks or more in your region, it's not the miner's fault this sucks for mining. It's not the scalper's fault. Again, scalpers can't scalp if people don't buy. Just look at the guy still holding those RX 6500 XTs they thought they were gonna turn a profit on. Nope, it's the result of gamers like you and I who want or need a graphics card and are willing to pay for it. Like it or hate it, that's how the market works. And as a PC gamer and a content creator who relies on this stuff to be affordable and obtainable, yeah, it sucks. And I could just make content by beating up on big tech companies for screwing over the little guy and it'll get the clicks and views. I mean, I'm just a one man show. I don't have an editorial oversight or any sponsors to appease. I can say whatever I want really, but that's not the type of content I'd be proud of making. I'm also an adult with college and retirement investments and as much as my heart says these big tech companies should ignore these very basic market factors and eat the extra cost of manufacturing in 2022 my brain knows that isn't even a reasonable or realistic business practice just imagine you're a business owner and you manufacture and sell a product you make a 10 percent profit on the sale of each of those products if all of a sudden the cost of making that product goes up 25%, how long can you continue to sell them at a 15% loss? And if you have stockholders, trust me, it won't be long. Okay, anyway, sorry, long rant, but it's just simple Econ 101. And on the bright side, 
maybe this RTX 3050 represents a turning point and hope because for the first time in over a year, we had an MSRP announced and then cards, some cards, were sold at that actual MSRP. Now, they all sold out, of course, and it'll be a week or two before we know what resupply looks like and where the market lands on final pricing. But however, briefly, it happened and I got one and I built a brand new gaming PC at MSRP. That's the video I was supposed to share with you today, but I've had a cold. We all know what that means in 2022. And it had me down and out for most of the week, but the PC is done. I got all the performance data. So my review, not really a review, but how this RTX 3050 performs in a realistically priced inspect gaming PC should be out in the next few days. Be sure to get subscribed for that if you're not already. And let me know in the comments what you think about what I just discussed. Why do you think everyone is still comparing cost of anything in our current market to what they were just a few years ago? Anyway, that's it for this one. I hope to catch you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.